right. Welcome to today's show. Today we have on Dan Root, the son of the doctor who pioneered the program for occupational medicine, Dr. David E. Root, author of Sauna Detoxification Using Niacin, radio talk show host of the Get Detoxinated Show, and president of Pure Being. Welcome, Dan. Great to have you on. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Glad to be here. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, now, for those of you watching who may not know, I've learned a lot from Dan's father's life's work, uh, the folks that he was associated with, and truth be told, I've, I've even taken away some positive ideas uh, from some of the organizations, from the Scientologists and all this stuff, even though I don't really subscribe to that. Uh, the technical information about niacin detox is, is not really well known, in my opinion. And most people who have heard of it think that, you know, it's just a way to pass a drug test or something else. But really, it's, it's so much more. So I'm excited to talk with Dan today about more niacin and what it can do for you. So, so welcome, Dan. Oh, thank you again. Yeah, so yeah, this, uh, I heard you already brought up uh, the, the Scientology background. I don't know if people really understand the, the, uh, uh, the program that we're talking about as um, the original Hubbard protocol or the purification rundown, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we've come a long way since then. And uh, I also want your audience to know that we, are, we have no affiliation with the right. Church of Scientology, yeah. uh, but my father's beginnings with this in 1982 uh, do stem from a uh, joint venture with a uh, splinter group. Okay. So, and we can talk more about that too, but. Sure. Well, starting off today, one of the main questions is, you know, what, why is sauna detoxification using niacin so unique in your opinion? Yeah, that's a very good question because there's a lot of detoxification uh, protocols that are out there and uh, there's a lot of really good ones. Uh, you know, the, the liver and the kidneys uh, doing flushes or cleanses and things like that, those, those are all good. Uh, but the problem is, is that uh, standard detoxification protocols that you'll find on the internet or, you know, in even Dr. Pizzorno's book, like the Toxin Solution, they, they're dealing with the gut, the liver and the kidneys. But the problem is, the toxins that we deal with, in fact, I prefer the term xenobiotics because mm. we're dealing with heavy, in fact, these are lipophilic xenobiotics. So these are the heavy metals and synthetic chemicals that are foreign to the body and they're fat stored or fat soluble. So uh, these types of chemicals and heavy metals, uh, you know, most of them are actually so new to our environment. In fact, since industrialization, like 150 to 200 years is about the, the time span for most of these chemicals, you know, mm -hmm. the body has not adapted to being able to process them. And unfortunately, medical doctors don't really understand that. So they figure your liver and kidneys are just processing these toxins and they're going right out through your, you know, the urine and the feces. The reality is that uh, sometimes the liver will break things down and actually make them more toxic. But uh, eventually, yeah, so eventually the, um, the, the chemicals or heavy metals that cannot be um, digested and detoxed normally mm -hmm. will sequester in fat. And uh, the, the fat includes your brain because your brain is 60 to 70% fat. But uh, we're also seeing uh, especially these days, um, other, you know, heavy metals like lead and gadolinium that are storing in the bone even, because mm -hmm. the bone has tissue, but, um, you know, the, the bones are uh, another place that these chemicals are storing. So where I'm going with this is that these detoxification uh, protocols that are out there are only dealing with the gut and the liver and the kidneys, but nothing handles the fat and the brain and the bones like this protocol. So it's, it's, a, it's a completely unique thing. And the mechanism behind it is so fascinating. I love talking about it, but I hate to uh, bore your audience. <laughs> well, I, I think I'm gonna ask you a couple more questions. So I wanna do a really good job for the audience. And some people have never been exposed to this information before. So maybe one of the things that I could do is just approach this as if I know nothing about, like not even know what niacin is. So for some folks that might be listening, when you start mentioning xenobiotics and lead and gadolinium and things like that, um, how, you know, how could they get, understand or digest that a little easier? Like how does somebody come in contact with extra lead or how does somebody get gadolinium poisoning or what does xenobiotic really mean to folks right. that don't even know? You know what I mean? Sure. And, and to start with uh, xenobiotics, uh, the difference between that and just toxins is the fact that uh, toxins can also refer to uh, the, the biological waste of bacteria. Uh, your cells break down and you know, they, they uh, actually do kind of become a toxin. 
there are pathogens, um, you know, actually the poop of pathogens can be toxic. And uh, so seriously, there's so many ways that the word toxin can be applied. Mm -hmm. I try to, uh, you know, restrict it to the idea of heavy metals and synthetic or man-made chemicals. So that's, okay. you know, when I talk toxins, you have to understand I'm really talking xenobiotics. Okay. And so just as an example for folks, how does somebody get like, uh, let's just call it lead poisoning or gadolinium poisoning or whatever those common things would be? Right. Unfortunately, in, in like the East Coast areas uh, and even some of the Midwest, uh, lead paints were used for too many years uh, okay. and there's too many products that were made uh, using lead. So that stuff is still, you know, leaching out of materials and causing problems. But mm -hmm. the gadolinium is a, a really... Um, sad story because unfortunately people are getting exposed to gadolinium through MRIs uh, with the, um, it was called a gadolinium based contrast agent or a GBCA. Mm -hmm. and, um, and again, unfortunately the, um, the uh, radiologists and their technicians don't really understand that uh, the, the material is not safe in the body. They believe that it's actually, um, combined or chelated uh, and and that uh, it's safe because of that. However, we know now that this is not true. The, the, the gadolinium is, uh, is um, breaking apart that uh, bond and mm -hmm. then uh, storing in bone um, the brain and the fat tissues and it's causing the severe bone pain is the number one sign. Um, and, and there's a whole constellation of symptoms that people get and they keep going back to the doctor to find out what's causing these symptoms. And then they get these repeated MRIs that are adding more to the problem. Uh, multiple sclerosis or MS is one of the biggest uh, culprits with this. Uh, these brain lesions are being scanned with the gadolinium based contrast agent. And so, you know, people are actually uh, compounding their problems. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a, a disease called uh, nephrogenic systemic fibrosis, NSF, which is definitely gadolinium based. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the, the list of uh, issues that people have with gadolinium uh, mimic so many different conditions. And uh, so people, if you've ever had an MRI with a, with a gadolinium based contrast agent, we have a heavy metals test that you can order from our website that, uh, you know, you'll find out real fast. You should not have any in your body. It is, it's one of the uh, most toxic rare earth metals. So hmm. that Interesting. help. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's a good point to ask this now, maybe we should keep it for later. But one thing that comes up is let's just say a family member is in a car accident or something and they get put in the hospital for surgery and they just happen to give them an MRI. Is there like a, you know, should they do something when they get out? Is there a, a standard operating procedure? My, my first instinct is, uh, now chelation is an option for them. And chelation is awesome for acute or immediate poisoning. So if you have had a gadolinium-based contrast agent within, you know, just maybe days or weeks, you know, the, the chelation is, is the first thing to do. Uh, but also uh, you, could, you could do um, uh, micronized zeolite or activated charcoal. Uh, these are the binders that will help to, you know, capture or adsorb uh, some of this material. So that would be the first thing, but um, definitely once this stuff has sequestered into the, the brain, the fat and the bone, it is very difficult to get out of the body without a protocol like ours. So it is something that uh, we are seeing a lot more of. And by the way, you know, we brought this uh, protocol from occupational medicine and it was only released to the public in 2018. So we've only had two years in the public venue. And uh, we hadn't seen gadolinium toxicity in all those years that we were doing this. I mean, 36 some odd years was, you know, without any known issue with gadolinium. So I'm seeing a lot more of that in this day and age. Um, but uh, the binders and the, and the protocol would be the thing. And, and of course, um, immediately, if you can, chelation. We can talk a bit more about chelation. That, that's the only thing the medical world uh, can really offer for um, any kind of heavy metal toxicity. And that's about all it's good for is heavy metals. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's only certain heavy metals. And it's not really that reliable. And it can only deal with the, uh, the heavy metals that are still in the bloodstream or being released from your tissues into the bloodstream. 
Uh, so, and that, that's also something that would lead into how the protocol actually works. But uh, I, I, again, this gets very technical and I don't know if your audience wants to hear that. Well, we'll, get it. we'll come back to it, we'll circle back. Um, you know, all this stuff is kind of related to, so there's no real way to, that we have to attack it. But, you know, I used to not necessarily promote, but mention um, some of the clear mind, clear body books or whatever, how is your protocol different from the Hubbard purification method? Right, Clear Body, Clear Mind is uh, L. Ron Hubbard's book and it was published, what, back in the 70s, somewhere along that line? Mm -hmm. In fact, I think it's the number one selling book, 260 million copies, but I believe most of that was to the Scientologists. Anyway, um, but uh, that book has a, um, a protocol that comes more from a religious type of uh, perspective so it it uh, it tells you how to do the program, but it's not very clear. Mm -hmm. And second of all, because of the advancements we've been able to make since we are not Scientologists, uh, our protocol is light years ahead of it. Uh, it's it's really kind of stuck in the past. It, it's what I would say is obsolete. As a matter of fact, um, our book, if uh, I may show, let's see if I can get this on camera. There we go. Uh, is that showing up? There we go. Right there. Yeah. All right. Only detoxification using nice and following yeah, that's, the that's our book, and this does detail the protocol. Um, it's it's upgraded in at least three different areas, and uh, one of the the important areas is is that uh, L. Ron Hubbard only had dry or finished traditional type saunas mm -hmm. to work with, and um, as you well know these saunas can run 180 to 200 degrees and people can only stand maybe 15 to 20 minutes before they have to cool down. So you go through these cycles of, you know, heat up, cool down, heat up, cool down, heat up. And then eventually you get to the core temperatures that we're looking for. Whereas we now use far infrared because we heat the body from the inside out. And this is gonna to get to one of the technical aspects of why this program is so powerful. But first, let me talk about the second um, advancement was uh, with niacin, those who don't know anything about niacin may not know that uh, niacin is one of the most unique uh, vitamins, it's vitamin B3. And it causes several things to occur in the body that are noticeable, which is unlike any other vitamin. So the first one, most people who've ever had niacin are familiar with the flush where your body turns red and usually starts at your face and just the upper chest and the arms and everything. Uh, you, you, you turn red um, and you, you probably will have an itchy prickly feeling um, that's you know annoying to some, others really enjoy it. But um, that, that flush was the main reason why L. Ron Hubbard thought the protocol was working was because as, as the flush occurs, you're opening up the capillaries and allowing more blood to flow, which is one of the reasons why you turn red. Um, and that's a prostaglandins thing. And then the histamines is what's causing the, um, uh, the itchy prickly feeling. So histamines uh, you know, are for healing. And mm -hmm. so they're an, uh, an immune response. Uh, that's something that also affects the flush, uh, which we can probably talk about in a little bit. But, um, Going back to why this protocol works, it, it's not because of the flush, it's because of a secondary condition that it causes in the body where it allows the body to release from the fat stores or the fat tissues and the cells even, uh, the stored toxins. And uh, it, it's a matter of the way the body produces energy. We use the fat cell, which is a, you know, a reservoir, like a battery, that the, uh, the mitochondria will break that down into two main components of fatty acids and glycerol. And the free fatty acids are coming out of the cells and bringing those toxins with them. So uh, this is called lipolysis. And when somebody's in a normal state of lipolysis, like you've been working out or doing something like even walking um, or especially exercise, uh, when your body needs to produce energy, you're actually uh, leaching out of your cells as you're creating more energy for your body, you're leaching some of these fat stored toxins. And so if you've ever been working out heavily and you've gotten really headachy or nauseous, it's because you've got a buildup of lactic acid and the body's full of these flowing toxins that are not having any way of uh, le leaving the body or being excreted. So this lipolysis cycle is, is important to understand because what niacin does is it actually depresses that cycle for about two and a half hours. And as the metabolism of the niacin occurs, 
the body is unable to really uh, release a lot of toxins from the fat. But when the niacin wears off, it allows the body to restart to full capacity, this lipolysis, and it winds up overshooting it. It's like a rubber band. I, I've used this rubber band where I, you know, I dangle a rubber band, like stretch it down. This is, this is uh, you on niacin. And then when uh, the niacin wears off, bing, it shoots up in the air and it becomes this uh, rebound. We do call it rebound lipolysis. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can measure about four times more of the uh, free fatty acids at this point. And at that point, you're also seeing about 200% more of these toxins coming out of the fat. And this is how the protocol actually works. So then you go into an exercise uh, phase of about 20 to 30 minutes where, you know, you're pushing these, we want to get the blood flowing. So you're pushing these toxins to the dermis layers. And then after that, you go into the sauna. And the sauna cycles uh, with far infrared versus dry convection saunas are different. You know, it's going to be longer in a dry sauna. In fact, when I went through the program in 1986 for the first time, I was using the Hubbard protocol and uh, I went 33 days at four to five hours a day. We don't do that anymore. We've now since learned that, uh, in fact, if you look at the graph and you see the two and a half hours where the niacin depressed that whole lipolysis thing, they were actually putting people into the saunas during that period of time, which was a complete waste of time. So uh, it's, it's basically now done where we give the patient or we tell you to take the niacin two hours before you do anything. In the case of coming to our center, it's two hours because there's travel time and getting you know, changed and all that. For people who are doing the self-directed, which we have you know, made available in the book, uh, they're doing the pro the program, you know, uh, they're, they're taking their niacin two and a half hours before they begin their exercise. So that at about the three hour mark, they're in the sauna. And um, that's why we're able to now reduce it from four and a half to uh, two hours. So um, it's, it's a huge difference. The other thing too is, is because when um, the body is sweating out toxins, it's not coming out of the watery eccrine sweat, which is what you get perspiration. You know, mm -hmm. this, is, this is one of the reasons why you may see these stupid debunking articles on, uh, on uh, no, you can't sweat out toxins. It's because they're right. You don't sweat them out through your, your uh, watery eccrine uh, pores. This is sebaceous sweat that we're dealing with. And this is why the uh, far infrared saunas are so much better than the dry saunas. The sebaceous glands in the body, and there's like 90 per square inch, are what keep the hair follicles and your skin moist. And so um, it's a lipid, lipid or oily based um, material, it's called sebum, and it melts really under this uh, uh, high temperature. So the, uh, the free fatty acids have released a lot of toxins out of the fat cells. The, the exercise has pushed those toxins to the uh, dermis layers, and they're right there at the sebaceous glands so that the, um, the sebaceous sweat can excrete most of the toxins. And um, by the way, this is the most studied detoxification protocol of its kind. There are at least 25 published uh, papers and um, there's also several papers, I think you've probably seen some of these, the blood, sweat, and urine tests, you know, where they, or the studies where they've shown that you do excrete uh, materials, especially metals, uh, out of the, the sweat there. And then um, there's also studies that uh, we have on a, um, a special link on our webpage that show the niacin, um, this rebound lipolysis. So we have all of that stuff published. So it is the most published and studied detox program, but it's 100% holistic. So, very nice. So, if somebody were to pick up your book, The Sauna Detoxification Using Niacin, a couple of those points, if they were to grab a different book like the other one we referenced, they wouldn't be in there, right? None of the stuff that we've talked about uh, is in there. By the way, there is a third thing to really complete the, the whole point about um, what's different about our protocol versus the Hubbard method. Um, we've already talked about the fact that the saunas are changed out, the, the, the uh, niacin, we understand now how that actually is working in the system. And the third thing is binders. Uh, the Hubbard protocol, they don't use binders like activated charcoal or micronized zeolite or that uh, Enteros gel. Uh, so, you know, basically the people who were doing their program were left without any way of getting these toxins out of the body. I should point out that when you're in this rebound lipolysis state, uh, it's a state that will last approximately six hours. 
So we have you in the sauna, maybe two hours. That mm -hmm. means that there's about four hours where you're still uh, dumping a lot or liberating is a better term, t uh, toxins from the fat cells. And, and so without binders to mop that stuff up, uh, you'll feel pretty miserable. Uh, headache, nauseous, uh, flu-like symptoms, you know. So uh, the binders have made a huge difference to this program. Awesome. Oh, awesome. So the folks that were doing the, the hover protocol, they, even without it being perfected yet, I mean, they still, some of them got okay results. Oh my gosh. I, I went through it in 86 and I got beautiful results. A real quick story was that I went through it in 86 and I haven't had any kind of need for a, uh, like a prescription or any kind of doctor visits, um, you know, ever since. Uh, the last or the next time I went through the program is in 2017 or 2018, I think it was. <clears throat> so I went from 20 or 1986 to 2018 without another detox. And I'll tell you, I, I attribute my excellent health to that. And by the way, I'm 57 this year and I feel 38. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's an anti-aging thing because it also deals with oxidation. Uh, and and getting the toxins out, which are causing all kinds of mitochondrial dysfunction, which you know, there's a whole lot about that we could talk about too. But uh, the reason why you know toxins are so bad is because it actually disrupts the proteins and enzymes that mitochondria need mm -hmm. to produce energy. So um, that's it's also why people can't seem to lose that stubborn weight because the fat is so toxic, the mitochondria is not able to produce energy with that fat. So it just accumulates more, which means it's also accumulating more toxic material. <clears throat> so as far as, you know, distributing the, or really implementing the protocol and helping people at the center and all of these things, how did you get involved in this? Because I'm sure growing up, I mean, your father it probably made an impact on you, but you mentioned your results from doing this for yourself. And I know you've been around other people and stuff like that. How did you get into, you know, becoming more involved? So <clears throat> I knew how good the program was. And <clears throat> when, um, in fact, we need to talk about what happened with the 9-11 first responders, because that kind of sets up the stage for why we didn't have a detox center actually active when I needed it. <clears throat> but um, we'll come back, I'm sure, to the, to the New York Rescue Workers Detox Project. But uh, just know that from 2000 to roughly till about 2007, the entire Scientology staff that was running the detox center for my father, uh, who, you know, by the way, was a, a Christian medical doctor that gave them credibility. They, they were basically um, working together because the, the L. Ron Hubbard protocol was getting, uh, uh, you know, basically, uh, uh, or it has a stigma <clears throat> that's uh, obvious. But yeah. um, my father found it to be extremely uh, helpful. In fact, the state of California, um, they, they challenged the use of the Hubbard Protocol in his occupational medical practice. And he literally uh, uh, submitted a 50 page response letter that got um, some awesome results. Let me turn that off. Should put that on airplane, airplane mode. So the... Uh, <clears throat> The, the state of California challenged my father and he submitted a 50 page response letter that uh, literally had 23 pages of cited medical uh, references. And mm -hmm. uh, that was um, what had the, the state of California medical board stand down and literally, you know, give him blessings to continue and became a client. <laughs> so, but the uh, New York Rescue Workers Detox Project took all of our um, Scientologists that were working the center to New York <clears throat> and so uh, we no longer had an active center and they were mostly doing consulting at that point anyway, because uh, they started this in 82 and for two decades then uh, they'd been treating people and then, you know, as projects around the world came up and they needed to uh, set up like the children of Chernobyl after the Chernobyl incident, um, there was uh, three poor firefighters and several other things, but um, uh, in fact, the Semich Slovenia study that he did. Uh, but um, anyway, so there was no center. And my wife uh, came down with or was diagnosed with hyperthyroidism. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And uh, because I come from fourth generation uh, medical doctor, um, I just blindly accepted the, uh, you know, the treatment protocol that uh, her primary care practitioner recommended, which was radioactive iodine therapy. And we went through the whole process. In fact, we even made it into a school science fair project. We had, uh, you know, Geiger counters on my wife's neck, you know, and the kids were uh, doing that as a, as a school study thing. Anyway, um, the, uh, the reality was is that uh, we found out that she's not going to ever get any better. And uh, that was not setting well with us. So I started doing the research we should have done beforehand. <clears throat> and that's where I found out that there were two things that we could have done differently to avoid having you know her destroy her thyroid uh the first one was changing out our diet you know we got to stop eating the uh, prepackaged processed convenience or fast foods uh the non-gmos we have to start you know eating those organic uh you know basically just change the diet was the big step the second thing was uh, toxins. We had to get the toxins out of her body because these toxins were disrupting mitochondrial function. And once we realized that, I really went pale. I was so angry because um, we have the best detox program, but it wasn't operational when she needed it. So um, that's where my passion uh, for doing what I do kicked in. Uh, I, was, I was angry and I needed to turn that into passion to help others so they don't, they don't make the same mistake. I say that we were under social allopathic conditioning and uh, I, I'm trying to break people of that. So, <laughs> Sorry, Big Farmer. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. I, I, yeah, that, that definitely. Yeah, I totally, that would be rough. It's kind of like, um, you know, once you go down a road like that and you could have done something else. <laughs> yeah. So what would you say is the difference between other detoxification wellness centers and what you guys' goal at Pure Being is? Yeah, so uh, thanks for bringing up Pure Being because um, detoxification wellness centers is what my father and I started off with. <clears throat> and then he um, announced he was retiring oh, about four or five years ago. And since I knew ahead of time that he was going to be retiring, um, I realized that what we needed to do was not only get the, the protocol back into gear, but understand how to make it a better, more palatable program. I knew people weren't going to do 30 days at four to five hours a day. Uh, that was just, a, a, um, I mean, as much as everybody would like to have a one hour quick fix, <laughs> uh, that doesn't happen when you've got a lifetime's worth of bioaccumulated toxins. Right. So, um, but I did feel that we could bring it down to a two week program now that we understood the niacin and now that we had the, the far infrared saunas and using the binders, we were able to prove that we could do a great job for health and wellness in a two week protocol at two hours a day. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, for people who have toxicities or, you know, certain conditions that uh, we have a known toxic uh, background with, uh, let's say like fibromyalgia, um, you know, there's uh, MS, uh, essential tremor, there's, there's all kinds of things that uh, have a, you know, even uh, rheumatoid arthritis, you know, these are all things that have uh, a basis with uh, toxicity. Mm -hmm. So um, people who have known toxicities or gadolinium poisoning, mercury, aluminum, you know, all of these types of things, yeah, all of these types of things, uh, we, we do recommend the 30-day program. And it's still two hours a day, but uh, we've had people like uh, Detective Dave LeBeau from New York who flew out here because he raided, he personally was involved with the raids of over 180 meth labs. And these meth labs are chock full of solvents and all kinds of, you know, uh, just totally hazardous materials. And um, when he came through the program, uh, we had some really interesting colored towels coming off of him. He would be sitting on a white towel and it would come out, you know, brown. It would come out blue, uh, sometimes multicolored, you know, tie dye. <clears throat> and then, um, it, you know, there, there are, in fact, one, one of the cool things about the blue I should mention is, is that I found out that uh, we could identify that that was sodium hydroxide, which is the main ingredient in Drano, which gives Drano that blue color. And he was literally sweating that stuff out. 
So um, wow. when he when he left here, um, he was still sweating, but he, I mean, he was still producing that material. He needs to do multiple 30 day programs. And in fact, now that he's learned how to do it at the center and do it correctly, mm -hmm. um, he's now doing it himself at home. He, he bought a sauna from us and now he's doing the program at home. And um, in fact, as you well know, uh, saunas are just good for health anyway. Uh, but um, when it comes to, you know, having a sauna and detoxing just normal, you know, in a sauna, uh, you will take a year or two to, to get, um, you know, even the smallest amount of toxins to come out versus going through our program where we have this high volume of uh, liberated toxins coming out of the fat that we're getting out through this, you know, sebaceous sweat. So mm -hmm. we detox you much faster. In fact, we've even, um, not only can, can you do the, uh, you know, blood and urine tests and hair analyses and all this, but um, what's fun is we have uh, some people who've come to us because they needed to pass a drug screen. Now, even though marijuana is legal in our state, uh, you know, there's still employers that don't condone it. Uh, yeah. And in fact, uh, drivers, for example, you know, the, the, the cross country drivers, they're not allowed to smoke at all, right? But uh, what we have found is where a chronic smoker may take, you know, 75 to 90 days just to naturally pass a drug screen, uh, we can clear them in less than 10 days. So it's, uh, it's pretty amazing stuff. But um, anyway, I, I think I answered your question. You did, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of a good segue, though. You said that. Um, you said that the gentleman that you mentioned from New York they was will. able to now do the protocol at home after coming and learning it to do it the right way. What are the benefits of somebody coming to the center versus just learning it self-directed or doing it on their own? Right. So the, the book um, covers pretty much just the detox. Mm -hmm. When you come to our center, we have a lot of other therapies and modalities that uh, we offer. Uh, we, we are part of a chiropractic center. So we have the chiropractic. We also have uh, things like Beamer, <clears throat> Beamer mat. <clears throat> and uh, we also have uh, microcurrent technology, which is a very fascinating uh, <clears throat> field. And then um, there's different nutritional things that we offer that we, we don't talk about in the book. Even though I look at the uh, whole detoxination, which is the term we trademarked, uh, mm -hmm. we wanted to try to differentiate from detoxification because that's got that drug and alcohol connotation, you know? Mm -hmm. So we, we coined the phrase or the word detoxination and trademarked that. Uh, hope, hoping to, um, you know, differentiate enough. Unfortunately, when I had that up on the wall as detoxation wellness centers, it, uh, it still was, I think, a stigma for people to come in there. Oh, I don't want to be seen going into a detox center, you know. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, that, that uh, detoxination, the whole concept behind it was, uh, first of all, you know, reducing the body burden of toxins. Second of all, was avoiding toxins. So how do you live a more toxin-free lifestyle? And the third thing was nutrition. So, uh, you know, when you come to the center, you get a lot more of that than you would in the book. I just covered really the, the protocol in the book. Uh, but um, there was something about the pure being in the detoxination wellness centers. So um, the, the, the detoxination wellness centers was what my father and I started with. Mm -hmm. And then when he retired, uh, I teamed up with uh, Dr. Gary Spainhauer, who's the chiropractor. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, uh, the team that we assembled includes two other folks. So there's, there's uh, four besides my father and I or excuse me, three plus my father and I. And uh, we decided that in order to franchise, which is where we're, we were heading before, you know, a certain CV uh, occurred, um, the uh, franchise would be pure being. In fact, I don't know if you can see the logo. There it is. <laughs> the logo's there. But anyway, um, you'll see that on our website and our Facebook group and all that. So, okay. I just want to make sure people know that there is a there is a new name uh, because of this new franchise opportunity. So, awesome, yeah. I think that gives us a pretty good overview of you know the protocol, why someone would be interested in it. Uh, now, thank you for being on some live streams that I did recently, um, doing a little sauna challenge and things like that. I fielded a few audience questions. Um, I asked pretty much uh, every night if people had questions leading up to this. And there are a few. <clears throat> Some of these might be basic, but I think a couple of them are worth mentioning. Just for folks that watch this on replay, they might not even know, you know, about purchasing supplements or things like that. So if you don't mind, we'll get into a couple of these. Love to. 
Question number one, why can't I use non-flushing niacin and make it easier to tolerate? To tolerate? And yeah, that's, that's a very good question. In fact, I'm glad that came up because um, there, are, there are different forms of niacin. A lot of people may not realize this. Uh, there's the, the flushing kind, the non-flushing kind, and then there's even uh, more variations. So uh, there's niacinamide, also called nicotinamide. There's inositol hexanicotinate, say that 10 times fast. Uh, but you know these, these different forms are non-flushing. And um, even though I said the flush isn't the reason why this protocol is important, it's the, the only way you can get to this rebound lipolysis is with the flush. I mean, with the flushing kind of niacin. It's gotta be pure nicotinic acid or niacin, and it uh, must be immediate release. There are other forms, there's sustained release, extended release, um, mm -hmm. which by the way, um, if your doctor uh, uh, wants to prescribe a sustained release, please uh, politely beg out of that. That's the only one of the niacins that, uh, that is known to cause hepatitis toxicity. That one I cannot say 10 times fast, not even once. Hepatotoxicity, there we go. So that's the uh, liver damage. And um, that one, that one is the, the sustained release niacin is the only one that's known to cause that. So um, try to avoid that if all possible. And I think people get those mixed up because they think that regular niacin can, you know, is associated with the liver damage and all this stuff. And yes, unfortunately they do. And I think there's too many uh, medical practitioners out there that aren't up to speed on niacin. And so they'll incorrectly tell patients that. Mm -hmm. Audience question number two, is it safe to do the niacin detox while pregnant? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, so great question. Again, glad that one got asked because um, the thing about pregnancy and this protocol, you know, while your fetus is developing in the in the uterus, uh, you're you're you know basically sending from your body to the, the fetus, you know, nutrients and things like that. But unfortunately, you're also unburdening. It's a word, believe it or not your own toxic uh, load into your uh, developing fetus. Um, in fact, there were studies that were done that showed the umbilical cord is chock full of toxins. Mm -hmm. I could go down and, and quote stuff off that, but just know that your, 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 um, your body is unburdening onto that uh, developing fetus. The other thing too is when the baby's born and you do breastfeeding, um, your your um, breasts happen to be the area that accumulates the most toxins. So you're also transferring, you know, toxic burden to the baby through the milk. Now, this leads to a better point is, is that uh, if at all possible, if you're planning a family prior to conception, you should do this program several months in advance. Uh, you need to give your body a chance to return to homeostasis and, you know, basically return to normal before uh, you really do conceive. But for those who've already, uh, you know, conceived and are pregnant, the, uh, the reality is, is that uh, this program is too dangerous uh, to do that. In fact, niacin in general, um, uh, in the way that we dose it, in fact, that's a really good point I should bring up. This rebound lipolysis that I've talked about triggers at around 500 milligrams. So anything below 500 milligrams, you don't have to really worry about it. Um, when you're on this program, we have to keep titrating you up because your body uh, builds up a tolerance to niacin. And in mm -hmm. order to trigger this rebound, you need to keep building up uh, your niacin dose. And, and also, by the way, the flush gets less and less for most people as you go up higher and higher because you've totally depleted the cell histamines and uh, you're, you know, basically your body's gotten so used to it. So, um, but uh, as, as we titrate you up, um, you know, the, the, the body is, is able to, um, to continue to trigger this. So um, I, I, I think I answered the question. Um, yeah. Okay. That's something I did not know. I didn't know that I knew about the, the mother passing through toxins to the fetus through the umbilical cord and stuff. I didn't know there was a high concentration of it in there. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea. I mean, it makes sense because I haven't been through that, but I had no idea about the breast. You've never milk. been pregnant? 
<laughs> I'm sitting here saying, if you get pregnant, <laughs> no, I, I understand that, that, you know, women who are already pregnant should not do this. In fact, I was, I was heading down the fact that uh, niacin is um, at 500 milligrams going to, going to release toxins. When we dose uh, people for the program, it's a single dose per day. And it starts off two and a half hours before we do the exercise and all that. Mm -hmm. The safe way to take a flushing kind of niacin, uh, if, uh, if you need to take it while you're pregnant, because there are doctors who will prescribe or tell you that you need more niacin, you do it in multiple doses. In other words, uh, let's say you're doing 300 milligrams a day. You'll do 100 milligrams in the morning, 100, you know, basically with each meal. So mm -hmm. breakfast, lunch, dinner. And um, there are people who are actually using niacin you know, for uh, their uh, depression or anxiety, and they typically are doing 3,000 milligrams a day. And they'll do that at 1,000 in the morning with, with breakfast and 1,000 at lunch and 1,000 at dinner. It's when you do these multiple doses that you thwart the whole rebound condition. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's safer to do it that way. Uh, so if you are pregnant and you want to take niacin, break it into several doses or keep it under 500 milligrams. But not for, not for protocol purposes. Yeah, you don't, want to be, you, you don't even want to be thinking about doing this protocol when pregnant. It's really interesting. Maybe some other time, not now, but maybe some other time, we should do a special video series on um, you know, how women can have healthier babies and maybe do... Absolutely. We highly recommend this protocol for uh, people who are considering to start a family. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, both the husband and the wife are going to be toxic. We've built up a lifetime, you know, accumulation of toxins just from the environment we live in. So, yes, it's, it's much better to, to under the detox, mm -hmm. you know, before you uh, actually conceive. Sounds That's like a good idea. Yeah, I've never even considered that, but it, it's something that I would want to do, you know, beforehand, if given the opportunity or the choice. You know? I'm in. <laughs> Uh, let's see where we're at with audience questions. There's a couple more here. How are we doing on time? We're at 4.46. I've um, got time. <laughs> so okay. I'm all your Audience question number three, what do you expel from a niacin detox? And this is a loaded question. What do you expel from a niacin detox versus other detoxes? They didn't specify what other detox means. I mean, right. You three. know, that I know we've sort of touched on this by saying that the, you know the other detoxes that are out there typically are dealing with the liver, kidneys, and gut, right? Uh, and and uh, there's also the um, you know coffee enemas, things like that. Uh, people love those. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I don't want any hate mail. <laughs> uh, but the um, the thing is, is that there are protocols that are out there that are also scams, and unfortunately, a lot. Not all, but a lot of these ion foot baths are scams. In fact, uh, if anybody's got one, here's the fastest way to test if yours is good. Don't put your feet in it, just turn it on. See how brown the water turns all by itself as it gets rusty, So, because uh, it's a chemical reaction. But um, there are some that are legit, but most of the ones that people buy inexpensively are knockoffs. And so um, I'm not a huge fan of that type of detox. Again, please no hate mail. I didn't do it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, our, our protocol does, uh, in fact, I love, I love to steal the term broad spectrum from our favorite uh, polluter, Monsanto. Uh, you know, Roundup uh, glyphosate, it, you know, is, is uh, a water soluble um, toxin. Unfortunately, because your body is so toxic with heavy metals that are lipophilic, they've opened the door to other water, water soluble toxins like glyphosate. And uh, the other thing we didn't talk about, by the way, is half lives. You know, a lot of these uh, metals and chemicals have half lives of many years. And so that means that, um, let's say it's a six year half life, that means in six years, half of it will have left the body. And mm -hmm. then in another six years, half of what's remaining there will leave. And then another six years, half of that. So it, it's almost like you never fully get rid of things. But our protocol is very broad spectrum. There's very little that we don't get out of the body. So <clears throat> any heavy metals or uh, synthetic chemicals, <clears throat> you know, we know we can get it out. <clears throat> but um, there are some that are very much more pervasive and persistent, like gadolinium, where it will take multiple programs. Some of the studies will prove uh, that the, um, the different chemicals have different um, uh, uh, 
release factors. Example being, you know, we know that certain uh, PCBs and things like that, we can, we can reduce the body burden in a 130-day program by 30%. There are other things that we know we, in one 30-day program, we can reduce by 65%. So uh, with gadolinium, we're, we're only pulling out a little bit per program, but by the time you do four or five, you've got most of it out. I don't think we can ever say that we get it all out. I mean, there's just no way to, to, to justify that statement, but we get you down to the point where you're below a toxicity level. So um, that's why some people will need to do multiple programs and you will see that. Uh, and the first one is usually the worst one. Um, you know, that's one where you're gonna see the most uh, headache, nausea, um, flu-like symptoms, you know, things like that, so. Good, good. That's pretty good for audience questions. I want to make sure that we make time to, um, because one of the things that really intrigued me and made me look into this more, not recently, uh, quite some time ago, is the 9-11 the Twin Tower Firefighters Detox Program, and I mentioned earlier, we probably circle back to a few things. This <laughs> is one of the things that I always find fascinating, and I think a lot of people can relate to the, the story, and may not know how the firefighters were helped. Um, many folks probably don't even know that the niacin detox was used to help the first responders who were poisoned during the, the Twin Tower collapse. And if you're not aware of that, all the stuff, basically all the construction materials from the burning buildings was inhaled and basically distributed all over those you know, city blocks where those guys were working. Um, so we talk a little bit about how the protocol aided firefighters um, Maybe we should mention how your father was involved or even involved before that. And some of the research was passed down to, to others. And, um, you know, just how that stuff helped those who, who breathed in the contaminants and assisted right. other responders back to wellness. Yeah, I'd love to. So the, the, uh, the councilwoman uh, from the New York area contacted my father and the team out here in Sacramento and, and basically begged us to, you know, do something to help these firefighters, uh, first responders. And um, so there was an initial, you know, uh, meeting with them and, and it turned out that there wasn't any funding to get anything going. And uh, because of the stigma of the Scientology, there was a lot of pushback. However, uh, Tom Cruise stepped up and he was able to raise a lot of money and uh, so they wound up being able to set up two centers in, uh, you know, on Manhattan Island, and they were able to really um, start treating patients for free. And that was important. Uh, so all of the volunteers and firefighters, uh, first responders, and some business or um, civilians, if you will, who were in the region, were able to go through the protocol uh, at no cost. And um, the thing about it was, is that uh, these folks probably should have done multiple 30 day programs, but at the time they were only able to do one, but that was enough to save their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, the, these folks, um, it, it was amazing to see their testimonials, which are on our website, uh, but um, to, to see the difference between, you know, when they started the program and when they came out of the program is amazing. Again, the towels were heavily stained from excreted materials. Um, there's one picture of a firefighter who is holding up a, a blue, purple blue towel. And um, they, they cut a swatch or two out of it and sent that off to the lab. And it came back morbidly high in manganese. Now manganese is, is good for the body, but not in the levels that he had it. And if you know anything about steel construction, uh, manganese is used in manufacturing of steel. So all that pulverized steel, you know, there was a ton of, um, uh, manganese at ground zero. And, you know, a lot of these firefighters weren't even wearing proper protective equipment. Um, they were, they were uh, in a hurry to get out there and some of them didn't have the right filters for their masks or there were, there's pictures of uh, workers out there with nothing covering their mouths and they were breathing in this dust and, you know, they were told that the air was safe to breathe, but that's a whole other argument there. Anyway, um, so the, the, the folks that went through the program uh, we, we had about 2,200 uh, first responders, volunteers, and uh, civilians from the area that went through the program. Interestingly, there's a woman by the name of Anne-Marie Principe, who was, I believe, one of the first civilians to go through the program. She was a businesswoman uh, in downtown, downtown Manhattan 
and um, she got overwhelmed by that big dust cloud that we all saw on television. And so she was completely coated in that dust. Uh, her lungs filled up immediately and um, she couldn't breathe, you know, coughing up a ton of stuff. But uh, uh, she saw her uh, primary care practitioner shortly thereafter and um, he literally told her, go home, take care of your affairs because you're not going to make it. Well, she had a business that was um, uh, modeling and uh, I think, you know, photography business. Mm -hmm. had like 100 employees. Well, one day she was locking the door, uh, closing down her business, uh, expecting to just, you know, go home and die. And she ran into a friend who pointed out that there's this detox center uh, down there that, um, that she should go try to get into. Well, her first visit there, they kicked her out. They said, you know, our insurance isn't even going to uh, cover you because it's obvious you're not going to make it, uh, which was kind of, uh, you know, sad at the time. But she reached out to my father and she pled a case with her case with him and uh, he decided to take her under his wing. And he was the uh, senior medical director, by the way, for the program. Uh, so he, and he was out here in Sacramento for the most part, but he would fly back and forth between here and New York. Uh, and in fact, I was running this, the, the medical practice during this time. So um, the, uh, the, the trips out there, you know, he, he uh, stayed to help her go through her 30 day program. She actually went a lot longer. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, she became a huge proponent of this program and in fact helped raise more money to see that more first responders got through the program. Her story is actually, um, there's several videos that you can find in my Facebook uh, page and fa Facebook group, I mean my Facebook group and my webpage. Uh, there's like a News 10 uh, thing from 2003 where she's interviewed. Um, and and she's, uh, she also appeared with us on Dr. Daniel Amen's uh, Brain Warriors Way pod podcast to tell the story. My father and I and uh, Anne-Marie Principe were on that. But um, anyway, her story is fascinating. And, you know, she, she keeps in touch with most of those people that went through the program with her, uh, the, the 2200, she keeps in touch with pretty much most of them. And uh, she reported back to us recently that um, as far as she knows, only two of the people that went through that detox program back in those days, only two of them have passed, and that's from age. Um, she said also that those who did not go through the program are, are dying about 1.2 per day, statistically. And uh, so the, the, the results were very dramatic. And uh, there's a lot of people who went through that program. I'm in touch with myself. And in fact, several of them are in my Facebook group and uh, they love to talk about this. So, you know, if you join my Facebook group, which is by the way, the, the same as the name of my book, Sauna Detoxification Using Niacin, um, you know, you, you'll be able to find um, these folks. Uh, it's obvious who they are, but uh, Joseph Higgins, Sebi Rasputi, and then Anne-Marie Principe, uh, they love to share the story. So um, please, please come join us there and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Can you add one little tidbit there? Like, um, for instance, you mentioned the statistics about how she said, you know, only 2% of the folks that completed it. So no, two, two people. Uh, two, two people. I, <laughs> two people. That's amazing. <laughs> Very good. Very good. So some, for somebody that is, is still kind of in the dark as to what the protocol can do, uh, in relation to the firefighters and let's just say smoke or other contaminants that they're coming in contact with all the time, how does the protocol specifically help them get rid of that stuff a little better than doing something else like maybe just sauna or just exercise or just, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. In fact, I, I, um, I kind of touched on that before. The, the, the idea behind this niacin rebound lipolysis is the fact that 200% uh, more toxins are being dumped or liberated from the fat cells and mobilized uh, with the niacin. And uh, the protocol was designed to keep pace with that liberation, to keep the excretion in pace with that liberation. So um, when you're on the program, you're gonna get this material out of the body much faster than uh, a regular sauna treatment because if you're just doing sauna, yeah, you're, you're somewhat melting fat 
I hate using that kind of analogy, <clears throat> but um, when you actually are causing the, uh, the free fatty acids to uh, basically bring out from the fat cell these toxins, you get the detox effect to happen faster with greater volume. And so that's the main reason why. By the way, I should mention too, uh, the lungs are being able to uh, it, um, reduce the volume of their you know, content of uh, toxic burden. So like Anne-Marie Principe's lungs were full of all that dust and everything like that. Well, they were coughing up a lung literally during the program, which would not have occurred had they not been doing it. Now that one, I happen to personally believe had more to do with the heat of the sauna. Uh, but it doesn't matter, whatever worked, right? Uh, but the rest of the toxic load that these folks uh, in, you know, endured uh, was coming out through that sebaceous sweat thanks to the rebound lipolysis. Got it, yeah, totally makes sense. Yeah, I love that stuff. I'm, I'm sure there's other examples too that we're not aware about like catastroph catastrophic events like that where people have been helped um, as a matter of fact, uh, the children at Chernobyl were one of them. Um, so, you know, the, the radioactive uh, um, fallout that uh, happened after the, the meltdown, these kids that were living in the area um, went through the program and they've had a whole turnaround of their, their um, lives uh, compared to the population that did not go through the program. They're in much better shape. Then, um, thanks to the, the uh, New York Res Rescue Workers Detoxification Project, which, by the way, has several studies at NIH.gov, also at getdetoxinated.com forward slash studies. That's the page I mentioned earlier. Um, the, the New York Rescue Detoxification Project, uh, the results of that um, con convinced the Utah uh, State Attorney General, Mark Shirtliff at that time, uh, to fund a project for these Utah meth cops who also, you know, were involved with raids of meth labs. And um, sometimes, you know, the, they get uh, doused, you know, when they're raiding things, you know, the, the bad guys will throw, the, you know, the chemicals all over them. <clears throat> so, you know, they were actually literally coming down with not only diseases, cancers and things like that, but they were uh, in such bad shape. Some of them literally, you know, committed suicide. And so Mark Shirtliff wanted to make sure that uh, he did a better job of taking care of his people. So uh, 68 of these police officers went through the program. This is also a published study and had awesome results. And in fact, there's several videos uh, on the internet you can look up and uh, it's, it's very fascinating to see how they did. My father was again, the, uh, the um, senior medical advisor on that program. But uh, that's another project that occurred. And then there was the Gulf War Syndrome study that because of these two other you know, projects that were published, the Gulf War Syndrome study was funded by the government. And um, in fact, uh, Dr. George Yu is known for uh, spearheading that. And Dr. George Yu was a colleague of my father who was working uh, for a foundation called the Foundation for the Advancement in Science and Education. So they worked together and Dr. Yu um, was uh, very instrumental in some of the studies uh, that are published that um, my father started. In fact, I don't think we've mentioned this, but my father actually is known for um, a, a study that he did in Semich, Slovenia with some capacitor workers. And um, the reason they got called out there was because there was this one capacitor worker who, who um, was exposed to a lot of PCBs, which if you don't, anything, don't know anything about capacitors, they have this horrible toxic chemical called PCB. And um, she was at the point of her, you know, needing help. She was sleeping 20 hours a day, useless the remaining four hours a day. But her breasts, like we've talked about, they're toxic, were um, excreting about 50 cc's of blue-green material daily. And um, so they were very much concerned about her. And they, they uh, called up, you know, my, my father's team, and uh, they went out in 1986 and 87. It was over that course of period. But uh, they did a study. They turned it into a field study and took fat biopsies uh, from the rumps of these, uh, these folks. There's like 14 or 15 of them. They took six-inch needles, dabbed them into the butt, and pulled out fat content and uh, tested that. And uh, they were startled themselves by the results. Uh, it showed that the fat of a body 
is 200 times at least greater in toxicity than any blood serum tests or urine tests would reveal. And um, they published several studies about that, which uh, kind of rocked the uh, medical community that cared, the toxicologists, things like that. And um, so that study has been, or one of those studies has been uh, cited in many other papers. But then Dr. Yu, uh, who met my father at a chance encounter at some um, event that he was doing a, a, a lecture, I think it was. Anyway, he found out about the program and got involved with the team. But um, Dr. Yu continued that research on his own patients and um, started testing the fat of his patients and putting them through a, a modified version of the program. He was never formally trained in it, but he did a modified version of the program and he was getting good results. But what he found when he did the fat tests was that there were certain PCBs and DDE, which is a metabolite of DDT, were a thousand times greater in fat than the blood serum tests were revealing. So, you know, when you do a blood or uh, um, urine test, just know that it's not even coming close to really identifying the, the extent of the problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, without doing a protocol like ours, that fat is not going to release these toxins. Right. And just a little tidbit for folks, in your opinion, does that, you know, when, when, doctors suggest doing chelation, um, you know, they're not always cognizant of, hey, maybe there's a body burden of some type of toxin that doesn't show up in, is, is that, do you see, do I see that happen all the yes. time? Yeah. yeah, in fact, uh, you know, when somebody's telling me that they've been doing a lot of chelation, I ask them, how many years have you been doing that? Oh, you know, five, six years. And it's like, you know, if you just go through this program, you could probably deal with it within a couple of months, you know? <laughs> So, uh, cause that stuff, you know, they're pulling out what's flowing around in the, in the, uh, blood and interstitial fluids. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's because, like I said before, when, when you're working out or, um, you're stressed or even when you're sleeping and your body's repairing itself, you know, you're, you're producing energy, which is leaching some of this, uh, toxic material from the fat. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so there's that that's available for chelation but there's a lot more stored in the fat cells that needs to come out. So chelation is really best suited for acute toxicity. So. Awesome. All right. Well, I, I mean, I feel like I could talk to you all day long about experiences or <laughs> my favorite issues. topic. <laughs> yeah. um, we're going on about an hour now. I, I've got some personal questions from me on the list. Some of it you've already, um, you've already answered inadvertently. The, if you have more time, though, I'd like to ask you a few of these because I think it would be helpful for the viewer. Absolutely. And then I think, you know, one of the things that we could do, if you're open to it, is if when, when folks see this on the replay, they might have some questions about doing the protocol or things like that that pertain to their own life. They could throw them in the comments below. And if there's, you know, a decent amount of interest, we could do another one or we could help, you know, somebody specifically as an example, if, if you'd be open to it. But mm -hmm. these are personal questions from me. This one you kind of already answered. Number one was, in your opinion, based on what you've seen over the years, how much of a difference can adding the niacin protocol to your repertoire aid in enhancing health over just the sauna by itself? You kind of already touched on that twice. Um, and so we'll jump to, in your opinion, how soon after beginning infrared sauna use for the first time, should someone consider doing a niacin detox protocol? Good question. So um, frankly, there's a couple of things that are going to be involved here. Uh, tolerance to the heat is one. Uh, a lot of people do have heat sensitivity, so yeah. they need to really acclimate to it. Another thing that will affect things is like adrenal fatigue. Um, the MTHFR uh, vi or, um, variation of the genes, uh, a lot of people are really concerned about that, and I, I want to really quickly touch on that. Um, the MTHFR uh, gene variations, if you're at all concerned about the, the concept that niacin is a methyl sponge. Uh, those who have this understand what I'm saying here. Anyway, um, just know that part of the protocol involves lecithin and lecithin creates choline in the body and choline is a methyl donor. So they balance out. We, in all of the 30 somewhat, 36 years, I think it is that we've been doing this, we have never had an issue with MTHFR. But things like adrenal fatigue um, and any heat sensitivities, uh, there's some people who have a condition that they can't sweat or they don't sweat, or maybe you, um, you are blocked up and sweat won't occur for maybe the first five or six saunas, you know, ramp up 
to doing this program. So it is kind of individual. It's unique to the individual. Um, I have a lot of people who will buy a sauna to do this at home because a lot of people are just not coming out to the center during this uh, CV uh, you know, time frame. So they're doing this remotely. They've got time on their hands. <laughs> so um, the, uh, the, 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 the purchase of a sauna to do it at home is a great way to do this because a lot of these sauna um, spas or gyms that have spa or saunas aren't open. Um, and, and, and a lot of these places, you can't even do uh, more than 45 minutes of a sauna, which is sad. I think people who have sauna spas should allow for people to do, you know, something like uh, 75 to 90 minutes of total sauna time so they can do this program. <clears throat> but um, if somebody buys a sauna and does this at home, typically they, they can start right away. Uh, I do try to have them, uh, you know, get in the sauna, go for a few days without niacin, then introduce the uh, niacin. Um, and by the way, with uh, flushing niacin, uh, I don't ever recommend people take more than 50 milligrams to start with if you've never done it. Um, the goal is 500 milligrams, but I've had too many people say, well, if that's the goal, let's pop 500 milligrams for the first time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've had uh, somebody I know here in Sacramento that uh, took a thousand milligrams for her first dose. Uh, and uh, I got a lot of texts from her, you know, how much pain she was in. Uh, but there are ways you can um, alleviate that, by the way. I hate to use aspirin, but unfortunately, aspirin at 325 milligrams will stop um, the, the bad, uh, you know, flush if you get too much niacin. Uh, try to avoid that if possible. 50 milligrams is where you want to start. And then introduce that as you're doing the sauna. Uh, and remember, you're not detoxing. You're not technically on our protocol until you hit 500 milligrams. So, uh, you know, if you, if you just kind of work your way up, titrate up, um, then you'll find out how well you'll tolerate things. Uh, and again, as you increase your niacin doses each day, the... Um, the, the body is losing that flush. I'm a, a moderator on the niacin B3 discussions group, and it's funny to, to see where people who've been taking niacin for a while get upset when they don't get the flush. And I have to tell them, well, just stop for a few days, like five to seven days, and your body will reset, and then you can enjoy your flesh again. But um, you're, you're depleting histamines and prostaglandins when you, when you take a lot of niacin. So what, as you're doing this protocol, the flesh is pretty much non-existent. That's not true for everybody. Uh, and in fact, it's, it's interesting how the niacin flush is different with everybody. And there's too many variables, like if you have food in your stomach, uh, the temperature of the water you drink it with. Um, there's uh, like if it's a capsule versus a tablet versus the powder. Um, there's just so many different variables. I've had people that were you know using our standard capsules who um, didn't even start their flush until the two hour mark, which it's crazy, but it happens. Uh, I've had people who flushed for the entire two hours, so you cannot predict this, but um, it, it's usually not a problem as you're doing this program to increase. I also wanna uh, kind of caution people at home, don't just take what I'm saying here and try to do this yourself. There's a lot more to the protocol. Uh, especially in the fact that not only are you sweating out the bad stuff, but you're sweating out the good stuff. All your vitamins and minerals are, are uh, being sweated out. And uh, you need to uh, um, not only replenish those vitamins and minerals, but you also need to be doing electrolytes um, after each sauna cycle. And I'm talking like, you know, the potassium, the sodium chloride, the cell salts, also known as plasma electrolytes. You know, you've got to be doing electrolytes. Uh, there's also, uh, with the Hubbard protocol that we carried over, there's this uh, beverage called CalMag. And uh, CalMag is a calcium uh, gluconate and magnesium carbonate mix that uses apple cider vinegar to actually change the pH of calcium. And it makes uh, that whole mix bioavailable to the body and the bones. So, you know, there's things that you need to know about. And there's uh, polyunsaturated cold pressed oils that uh, help to replenish the, uh, the lipids that you're mobilizing. So you, you gotta know that this is not something you just pop some niacin and go sit in a sauna. Uh, it, it's, it's much more than that.
right. Uh, question number two or three for me was, in your experience working with folks at the detox center, are there any cases where someone should not do the protocol? Absolutely. Earlier, you mentioned being pregnant and things like that. So kind of already hit one, but is there anything else that folks should be aware of? Yes, uh, there, there is a, a long list of contraindications for this protocol. Uh, they are listed in my Facebook group files. They're listed in the book. Uh, but in a nutshell, yes, pregnancy being a big one, uh, most heart conditions need to be evaluated by a primary care practitioner to see if your heart condition is okay to do this program. Hemophiliacs cannot do this program. Uh, it's just not indicated for them. Uh, there's, there's other things. Uh, if you're on uh, psych drugs, um, you, you need to know that we're pulling out uh, all the chemicals with this protocol. So if you're on any kind of medication, uh, you know, that medication is probably not going to be able to do its job uh, because we've pulled it out and you're sweating it out. So uh, if possible, and work with your primary care practitioner, because we're not offering any medical advice on this episode. But uh, if, you, if you do work out with your primary care practitioner to, um, you know, taper down your medications, uh, you know, that, that would be your best thing to do. Um, the, uh, th there's there's a, a couple things that we have in our files section on our, our uh, Facebook group that uh, also will help you to identify uh, or, or explain even to your primary care practitioner about this program. That's also on our website. I don't know if I've mentioned it, getdetoxinated.com is our website. And um, there's, there's uh, you know, a whole bunch of resources and things like that that uh, are available to, to like explain what this program is. Cause uh, you know, we just brought this to the public in 2018 and most primary care practitioners are never gonna hear about this unless you, know, you the patient uh, mention it to them. Uh, naturopaths are the same, um, uh, you know, there's even most chiropractors. Fortunately, there's a lot of uh, homeopathic or holistic type practitioners who get the idea, but they may not understand it. And so I've tried to do the best I can to explain this program to people because mostly they have this clear body, clear mind book as a reference. And it really was written more for, you know, the religious side of things. Uh, they, they certainly aren't doing a medical procedure, but fortunately, uh, because of my father's involvement and Dr. Spainhauer's involvement, we still call them patients. Uh, you know, we are still, we are still uh, working under a medical uh, license. Um, I have to tell you, because I know you're from the telecom world, uh, and I am from the IT world. And so, you know, I, I latched onto this because number one, it helped me in 1986 and carried me through until 2018. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm from the IT world, so I'm not a doctor. Uh, so in other words, I don't take any medical advice from me. I'm not offering it, but I can certainly tell you that uh, as a preventative measure, this program is the best thing you can do for any kind of health and wellness, uh, you know, uh, uh, program or whatever you're doing, this is a great place to start. So that answer that question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if, um, so if, if someone has existing health challenges is in your opinion, is there anything that someone can do to work up to being able to tolerate more sauna use or do the protocol or things like this? Yes, I've mentioned Dr. Prezorno's uh, The Toxin Solution book, uh, on, um, or I, I've mentioned it before because I actually recommend it in my book. Uh, this is something that will help with the gut, and, and any good homeopathic uh, practitioner will tell you that death starts in the gut. And um, so he works that angle first, and then he does the liver and kidneys. He's got some special diets and things like that. There are others that are out there. Um, I, I, I appreciate, you know, all the different uh, um, herbal type of things that people can do to improve their uh, liver, kidneys, and gut uh, to, to do something like this. And I know you're, uh, I think, specifically also talking about infrared saunas or saunas in general. Yeah. But... Uh, but for our program, you know, you can uh, work on those areas. I have to also just point out the fact that this protocol, because you're sweating out most of the toxic materials and then the binders are picking up the rest, 
we are actually safer for your liver and kidneys than any other detox program. So um, this, this is another wonderful reason to do the program. Uh, if you are compromised in your liver and kidneys, you probably can do this program because the, uh, the sweat is going to take care of, the sebaceous sweat is going to take care of a lot of the toxins and then the binders will you know, mop up what it can, so. Got it. Yeah, it makes, that makes total sense. All right, well, we've covered a lot of stuff here. I think um, I think we've, we've pretty much given it a 30,000 foot overview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't uh, expect we'd go this long, but again, this is my favorite subject and I can go on for hours. <laughs> so. I'm pretty sure that after a few folks, you know, have a chance to digest some of the information, they'll probably have more questions, so. And, and people can know. throw them in the, in the comments of this video, so. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned some stuff earlier. I, I didn't want to interrupt you, but you mentioned um, where people can find the studies and things like that. If you weren't able to type out the URL and go see that, we're going to put links in the description box to all the resources. I'll put the specific name of the book if you want to find it on Amazon. We'll put a link in there to where you can join Dan's Facebook group on Niacin Detox. Um, everything that you might need is, is pretty much in there. Yeah, in um, fact, uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, there's also um, a video, video tutorial course that we produced and um, we'll put that link in there too, because uh, a lot of people are visual or they have too much brain fog and they can't read the, the material. Um, so we produced a video tutorial course and uh, the idea for that came from some guy named Matt. <laughs> you! <laughs> I, I remember talking to you a couple of years ago and, and uh, you put that bug in my ear and uh, I, I had the perfect opportunity uh, and it's kind of, sad but humorous at the same time but um when i had the opportunity to, to to produce that tutorial course i was in my original center and the one that my father and i built the detoxination wellness centers and uh i knew that we were going to be uh, closing up so the the last video the moment i turned off the camera i literally had to start tearing down that center so uh but i knew that it needed to be done and that was the perfect environment to do it. So the video tutorial course you'll see is the original detox center, but uh, I, I'm now with the Spain Howard Wellness Center and, uh, and it's less than a mile away from the old one, but um, I, I like the location better. Uh, so, but uh, yes, thank you for that uh, idea. It was a great idea. I'm glad, I'm glad people have more access to the material and you guys are able to get out there and and educate folks and more people get helped and I don't want to use the wrong medical terminology no one is no one is uh you know promoting uh, medical advice here but thank you thank you for coming on it was great talking to you I enjoyed this I think maybe we'll have to do this again and I'd what... love to yeah I'm I'm always willing to talk about this so and, and in fact, we can share some other stories because there's a lot of testimonials and things like that. Of course, a lot of these are videos that you can find on our website, getdetoxinated.com, uh, in the Facebook group. So, um, you know, basically, the, there's some wonderful testimonials. We, we get a lot of video testimonials. In fact, I've got one that's really I'm very excited about because this is a gadolinium uh, patient that uh, came to our center, did 17 days of the program, and then had to go home. She originally tested at 6.3, it doesn't matter what the, the you know, units there were, but 6.3. Uh, after 17 days, you, know, you let your body then um, rest for 30 days before you do an, a follow-up test. She did that. Her follow-up test was 0 0.1. And um, that was remarkable because fortunately she caught it. Uh, she knew when she got injected with the GBCA, the gadolinium-based contrast agent, that she was uh, having a bad reaction to it and it was causing her problems. So she caught it early and uh, by coming through the program when she did, she was actually able to get rid of a lot of that material within just 17 days. Now she did buy Asana and she is uh, continuing to do the program. Her name is Michelle Mick and she is in the group and she loves to talk to you guys. Um, but there's two videos that she did. One was just a, a straight interview about her experience. And then the second was the follow-up where we found out that she went from 6.3 to 0 0.1. It's exciting to see that. Uh, that. That gives hope to a lot of gadolinium poisoned patients so or people. That is awesome.
that is awesome. And people can interact and stuff in the group. Oh my gosh, yes. In fact, it's highly encouraged. And by the way, um, because we don't know what's going to happen with Facebook censorship, uh, you know, they may shut us down because we're talking medical stuff, right? Or health and wellness. Um, if they do, uh, getdetoxinated.com, we've now actually uh, turned on a forum. We have a, a, a group that's similar to Facebook that people can actually enroll in. So uh, if Facebook does shut us down or if Facebook gets shut down, um, then people can uh, come to our website and, and have the same experience, you know, with the uh, forum and being able to ask questions, especially if people who've already gone through the program, uh, whether at our center or at home, you know, they, there's a lot of people in our group who are willing to share their experiences and we encourage people to share as they're doing their program. So, right. And people can find out more about that in the links in the description box. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks so much, Dan. You want to end the show with one rapid fire question? Uh, do I want to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what it is. <laughs> You've got a question for me? Yeah. Go for it. What is the one thing that I should have asked you during this show that I didn't know to that would probably help people the most? You know, in thinking back on everything we've discussed, I think we've done a good job of covering the bases. I really do. Um, in fact, if you were to really put me on a, you know, on the spot there, um, I would love to have talked a bit more about my father's background, but, um, you know, I think we did cover well enough that he was involved with um, in the military with uh, you know exposures at the workplace he's got a fascinating uh, career um, but uh, other than that I think we've covered it so so I was thinking we'd take the answer to that question and that'll be the next show <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I'm, I'm very uh, you know honored and, and uh, proud to call him my father. I don't know if everybody else is going to be wanting to hear about it, but uh, I mean, things like uh, the secret space program he was involved with, you know, the, the manned orbital lab project. He was an astronaut for the military, uh, or at least in training. The way he got his um, uh, flight surgeon status, he's actually one of 10 flying physicians that was in the military during his career. So he was a doctor pilot and uh, stationed in um, uh, RAF Farnborough. Uh, so he was the first exchange officer with um, the Royal Air Force. Um, I mean, there's a ton of stuff <laughs> about his past that's fascinating. And if you look him up on uh, Wikipedia right now, you'll see this extremely poor bio, uh, bio on him. And it says he's known for Scientology. Well, I, I'm the one who was able to actually get the original uh, Wikipedia bio of him uploaded and accepted. It took eight tries, finally got it up there. Uh, but I think Big Pharma has kind of a hand in, you know, controlling that uh, platform. And uh, over the course of the years, I think it's been whittled down because of that point and then also uh, a lot of Scientology haters. But uh, I'm used to that, you know. It's a stigma that uh, I, I would rather um, uh, hit head on because we are not uh, connected with the Church of Scientology. They did, I mean, L. Ron Hubbard did come up with this thing, but uh, we've perfected it. And they are basically stuck in this obsolete model. And, um, you know, actually, I'm kind of glad about that. But, uh, you know, the, the thing is, is that um, we do still credit the, the history of how this came mm -hmm. about. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> awesome. Well, good talking to you, Dan. Thanks for coming on and uh, really appreciate it. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you next time. And I'll probably see you in the chat room this evening because I know you're doing your 30 for 30 challenge and uh, it's been fun to be in there. So, uh, yeah. you know, people are going to probably see this, what, maybe tomorrow. So they'll know that they can tune into the 30 for 30 challenge. Uh, in fact, uh, let's make sure that they know which YouTube channel um, like my audience doesn't know you, right? Oh, it's just my name. If you just Google or just YouTube search Matt Justice, 
usually there is a premiere that is held live for the, the live stream that night. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for uh, having me on. I, uh, I've had a good time. And uh, again, anytime you want, I'm, I'm here for you. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Good to see you. Take care. Bye. Bye.